So are yeah. there specific ones that you guys have seen or that come with switching a loan? Are there specific costs that when you are switching a loan, um, they, they are um, associated with it? Do you know, you, some people might not be aware of those. Um, can you take us through mm. some of those if they do exist? Yeah, absolutely. So typically, there's four major costs that you need to actually look at. Uh, but just to contextualize it, you are looking at moving your bond from one institution to another. So in that process, um, you need to have an attorney that will re-register, not re-register, but change the bond from one entity to the other. Good evening and welcome to the Private Property Podcast. It's a weekday and it's 7 p.m. So we are talking everything and anything property. If you are joining us for the first time, thank you so much for stopping by. And I hope that you are going to have a good time. If you are joining us on the Twitter Spaces, a special shout out to you and thank you, and thank you for joining us for tonight's episode. So tonight I am joined by experts as usual, people who are going to be talking to us about a topic that is really on the pulse and top of mind I'm in the property industry at any point in time because, I mean, every property um, investor and property uh, player wants to make sure that they maximize their uh, property portfolio and of course save money. So in today's topic we are talking switching your home loan and possibly accessing some equity and I am joined by um, Pusha Litlape who's a portfolio manager as well as Kyle Villagazi who is the head of virtual channels at APSA Home Loans. Good evening guys and thank you so much for joining us. Good evening to me. Kyle, can you hear us? I can hear you. Good evening to me. Perfect. And Thank you so much for joining us, guys. Um, we really appreciate it. And I'm um, looking forward to talking to you guys um, about this conversation to which is exactly switching a home loan. What is it and how does it look? Who can switch a home loan? Like, take us through the nitty gritties and your experience. How has switching home loans helped people in the past? Um, Portia, let me start with you. Ladies first. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And uh, once again, thank you so much for having us this evening. Uh, such a pleasure to be joining you. Um, to me, I think, you know, maybe let's start with understanding the context, you know, in terms of where we find ourselves, you know, in the, in the South African context. So we've seen very low interest rates over the time when we had COVID, um, you know, lockdown, etc. We saw the repo rate decreasing significantly, which actually made sure that, you know, customers had access to, um, to credit, which actually made it possible for a lot of our customers to access home loans. Now, we know that, you know, when you apply for a home loan, they do affordability assessment, et cetera, you are given an offer from an interest rate perspective, and that is actually how you actually get to, you know, get access to a home loan. Now, we've seen over the past couple of months, um, the, the South African Reserve Bank has actually increased uh, the repo rate, right? So each time interest rates increase, it means that you pay a little bit more than you would have ordinarily paid. So every time the FARB says the repo rate is increasing by 25 basis points, you go and you calculate and you say, oh, that's an extra 300 rand. And you can only imagine if that happens four times in a year, you're paying about 1,200 rand extra. Mm. So customers are actually in the market to look at ways to reduce this pressure from an interest rate perspective. And switching is one of the ways that customers can look at, you know, reducing these uh, pressures from an interest rate perspective. So customers are looking for a way to save money and you could be looking for competitive rates. Your bank could possibly not be willing to reduce your interest rates. And that's why you actually go out to another bank or other banks and say, Here's my home loan. I want to switch it to you. Can you give me a better interest rate? It could be service that you're not happy with, or you could want to put all your products with one bank because you want to benefit from the reward perspective, right? So um, really that's what switching is about. And when we say switching, we are saying you are literally moving your outstanding balance from one bank to another. You're not moving houses, and um, you, you continue paying your monthly installments with another bank. Thanks, for me. Sure. Um, very informative. And when we're talking um, switching, are we saying that this is um, specifically for, for people who are 
um, like how do, how do we quantify people who can switch? Are we saying it's everyone? If you have a home loan and you, you are looking for a competitive interest rate, then you can look into switching. Or are there terms and conditions that are around switching? Um, and I'm asking that because uh, one might be in, in a current home loan now and thinking of switching. Is there clauses that might be in their loan agreement um, with the current bank that they're in that um, won't allow them to switch? I think I'll let Carl take this one. Yeah, so happy to come in there, Edu. Um, so I don't think we apply any conditions whatsoever in terms of the type of person that actually switches, mm. uh, nor do we actually look at it in terms of what you'll be using the funds for. So we try to actually make it as easy as possible for all consumers um, to actually meet them where they are in terms of ease of convenience. But typically, the funds could be used for just about anything, right? So uh, from paying school fees, as an example, to holidays, home renovations, and even solar solutions are part of the things that we can, you can actually use those funds for. And I think to Portia's point, uh, given the strenuous nature in terms of what we're seeing in interest rates, uh, it's now the most viable time to actually look at it if your bank is not necessarily giving you the right sort of interest rate. And of course, we mitigate a lot of some of the, the costs, which we'll unpack a little bit later in terms of transfer costs uh, associated with the switch. Sure. Um, let's talk a little bit more about um, an, applic an applicant, like someone who is... Um who's switching does this necessarily allow them to access equity because in t tonight we want to talk about them possibly accessing this equity is it is it a given that if i switch i will definitely <laughs> access a little bit of equity um i'll take that one um so i think let's first explain what equity is right yes. so you bought a property let's say five years ago and at the time the property was valued at a million so you you, you bought it for a million, and we know that property appreciates in value. So as an example, your property's value has increased now to 1.2 million. Um, so you have equity in your property of 200,000, which is the difference between your loan amount and the value of your property, right? Mm. Now, in the context of switching, you would have already paid some amount towards your loan amount, right? So let's say for argument's sake, you're sitting with an outstanding balance of 800,000 rand. Now you've got equity of 400,000 rand, right? It's the value of that sitting in your home loan. So when we talk accessing equity, basically what we're meaning is that 400,000 rand that I've just explained is equity that you can apply to the bank and say, I have equity of 400,000 rand. Can I access these funds? So the bank will obviously go to a credit assessment, a, an affordability assessment, check if you can actually afford to service this 400,000 rand um, loan and grant it to you. So basically the bank will pay you the 400,000 rand in cash. And I think, you know, to Kyle's point, banks don't ask you what you're going to do with 400 rand if you're using it for anything as Kyle yeah. um, explained here. Thanks. Sure. I like the fact that you were saying that we can use it for anything because that's exactly what Kyle was speaking to. And, and I, I, I think I like that fact because, you know, nobody wants to really be dictated to what they're going to do with money that they receive. And um, my next question is that does it always result in equity? Because sometimes um, the value of the, the property might have dropped. And we've seen it um, based on um, conversations that we've been having on the podcast in terms of property valuations and the market as it's changing and the different things that are changing in terms of um, maintenance and all of the things that may devalue your property as, as a property owner. So in the case that um, it does not result um, in, in, um, in equity for, for, for the property or the homeowner, what happens in that case? Yeah. So um, I think in the context of switching and, and equity, because we're talking about them interchangeably, mm -hmm. um, when you switch your home loan, let's say in the example I used, you've got an outstanding balance of 800000 at another bank, you want to switch it to APSA, you will apply for the 800000 rents to be transferred to APSA, and then you will say, can I have an additional 400000 rents because I believe that I've got equity in my property. So yes, there are instances, you are right, where you don't have equity in your property. It could be that you took out a further advance while you were with another bank, so you've used up the equity, or you're switching too soon. Your property has not really accumulated um, you know, any equity, so you can't access additional funds. Um, but I, I would assume that you know, as a customer, you would possibly have a sense of where you are from an equity 
perspective um, before you actually applied. You know, property valuations are done as well, to your point, as part of the application mm -hmm. process, which, which um, you know, we can discuss at a later stage. So um, I would say if you do know that you've got equity or you suspect that you've got equity, apply for it, let the bank do evaluation and tell you how much equity is available and how much we can expect to you. Thanks. Sure. Um, yes, Carla, switching your home loan and possibly um, accessing some equity from whatever you have already paid on your uh, home loan. So if you have any questions, any comments, please do filter those to us so that we can field them right here on the conversation tonight. Thank you so much for everyone who's actually joining us on the Facebook feed. We really, really appreciate you always coming back and spending your evenings with us. So I'm just quickly going to go through the poll. The poll for the day, we asked everyone, what is your favorite house design? And we gave everybody four options. We gave them the modern house design, um, the Cape Dutch house, house design, as well as the Victorian house um, design and the Tuscan house design style. And our, our, our answers were actually quite almost the same because everybody said either definitely Tuscan or a modern day with a touch of farmhouse design style. Um, if you okay. got equity, uh, Portia, and you had an ability to change your house, which one would you go for? Well, really definitely the, <laughs> I think definitely definitely the cake patch <laughs> design. I mean, also, so I love oh, those. Wow. <laughs> and Kyle, I'm guessing you're going to go modern. Of course, man. <laughs> so modern, digital, that's where yeah. I'm at. <laughs> because everybody really wants to come home and ask uh, Google Home to put the lights on. So everybody <laughs> will we'll just put go for, for modern. Um, thank you so much for that, guys. And we will we'll keep going on to the conversation and ask um, in terms of the conditions, because one of the things that I'm already thinking is that then you find people who switch to, 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 to one financial institution or they get their, their, their home loan from one particular institution and then keep hopping around. You know, we've got different financial institutions in South Africa that at different times may provide competitive rates. Are there conditions that apply to people who, who switch, number one, or who, after switching, you, don't, you, you are not able to do one, two, three? Are those conditions um, that are outlined before or what, before or after one um, switches? Kyle? Yeah, thanks. I'll take that, Edu. So um, from a condition standpoint, banks typically don't place any conditions on uh, the customer they s who switched to them, right? Uh, there are obviously typical conditions that are associated uh, with a home loan. Uh, top of mind, I mean, looking at property insurance, life insurance, in some instances, based on income bracket can become mandatory. And of course, uh, the condition of paying your monthly uh, repayment on time. Uh, so I think those are the typical ones. We would typically also go through a normal affordability assessment when we do a switch, uh, assess the asset uh, if you're switching over to us, uh, but we don't necessarily place any uh, significant conditions on people switching over to us outside of the normal uh, status quo um, criteria that we normally apply. So are, are we saying that there's a possibility for you attempting to switch and your switch application being declined? Yeah, so it can be declined um, by virtue of us needing to actually go through an affordability assessment, right? So um, if for whatever reason there are significant issues on your credit bureau, or even if there's a judgment, um, there will be those hindrances um, that would prevent us from granting you that switch, even if you choose to come to us. So it is important, especially from a NCA perspective, uh, that we grant credit appropriately and we're not seen as being reckless in our approach uh, when we're granting credit. But that goes for every application, right? Not just unique to switch it. Sure. And, you know, closely related to this, we spoke um, on the podcast not too long ago about how costs or these um, different costs that come with buying a home, uh, a home and a property creep up on on prospective buyers and they, they were not aware that these things were going to happen, you know? So are there specific ones that you guys have seen or that come with switching a loan? Are there specific costs that when you're switching a loan, um, they, they are um, associated with it? Do you know, you, some people might not be aware of those. Um, can you take us through some of those if they do exist? Yeah, absolutely. 
So typically there's four major costs that you need to actually look at. Uh, but just to contextualize it, you are looking at moving your bond from one institution to another. So in that process, um, you need to have an attorney that will re-register, not re-register, but change the bond from one entity to the other in terms of the banks that you're dealing with. But just to run through it in a little bit more detail, we have early termination charges that are typically charged. Uh, the bank from which you are moving your home loan to may charge up to three months interest charges that would be payable under the agreement. Therefore, you need to provide a notice of about three months to your existing bank, informing them of the intent to cancel your home loan with them and await three months before canceling your home loan to avoid termination charges. Um, as I mentioned, there are cancellation attorney fees as well, because attorneys need to register uh, the bond against uh, yourself uh, if you're a homeowner uh, at the deeds office. Uh, so that comes and attracts uh, bond cancellation costs that would be payable uh, from your side. Uh, this bond registration cost as well. And again, as the bank you're switching to would require that a new bond is registered under that bank in the deeds office when the home loan is switched to them. Uh, it'll appoint a bond registration attorney uh, and those costs will be payable by the cancellations attorney. And then lastly, uh, we typically look at initiation fees. So initiation fees are charged by banks when the new home, home loan is initiated. And these costs are payable by the consumer as a once-off payment that can also be added onto the loan amount just to make things a little bit easier. Uh, but I think the biggest uh, outcome here is that there's no transferring costs, right? So mm -hmm. given the fact that you already own the property, you mitigate your typical transferring costs that you would pay at inception of a new bond. So typically there's bond registration costs as well as transferring costs. But obviously in the form of a switch, the property still remains in your name. Uh, so we mitigate all those costs altogether. Thanks. Cool. Posha, I'd like, sure. I'd like us to... And you know, as a property investor or a homeowner, as I'm sitting at home now and watching this episode tonight, I've got one question in my mind. When and how do I apply? <laughs> so can anyone please take <laughs> us through that process? Um, like you were just saying now, um, take us through that process. How does it look? Um, and how long does it possibly take? You spoke a little bit about a three-month, 12-week period. Um, talk us through how it is and um, how it looks typically and how will I know that I'm doing it right? And what are what are some of the things to look out for for me to know that I'm doing it wrong? Awesome. So uh, I think maybe just to highlight the process, starting from where I ended off. Uh, in principle, there are two checks that are typically done: one on the consumer to make sure that, from a creditworthiness standpoint, there are, there are no challenges there in terms of bureau or judgments. The second part is on the property. But to unpack it in a little bit more detail, um, you'll complete an application with the bank in which you wish to switch including the property valuation, like I mentioned. We'll go through a normal credit affordability assessments where we'll ask uh, for some of the documentation uh, that you may uh, provide. Um, in most instances, now we are able to do it digitally. So we have golden sources where we're able to actually pick up a lot of the documents. Uh, typically, your pay slips are something that's critical to allow us to do that uh, assessment. Uh, beyond that, uh, you will then place a notice of cancel on your home loan with the existing bank. Um, the bank that you're switching to would appoint a bond registration attorney to register your bond with the deeds office and the bond registration costs will be payable by you to the attorney uh, as you as they proceed to lodge and register the property uh, from a bond cancellation perspective. Uh, the bank that you're switching from would appoint a cancellation attorney to cancel your bond with them in the deeds office and the cancellation costs will be payable by you as the consumer to the attorney. Uh, when we look at it as well, you would need to ensure that you satisfy the conditions placed on your home loan by the bank uh, you are switching to, such as property insurance, life cover, as well as, like I've mentioned, setting up uh, that debit order. Uh, and we have a very extensive debit check process where we need to actually just confirm that debit order. Um, and we've actually advanced that to doing it a lot more virtually as well. Uh, but once you place the notice to cancel in your account, your current bank also can make contact with you to determine the reason that you're switching. And they may attempt to sort of deal with some of the reasons that you prescribe to them. So, for example, as we mentioned, that price may be a bit of an issue. So your bank may try to contact you to offer you a better price prior to you moving over to another bank, um, purely from a retention perspective. 
so from a process perspective, that's typically what it takes. Um, I think the biggest parts in terms of the time period that we mentioned is um, the, the deeds office component, whereby uh, the attorneys are really re-registering that uh, bond uh, through to the new institution. Uh, but typically through the number of mediums that we have, um, it's, it's a very quick process to get that outcome from the bank. Um, uh, maybe biasly from a virtual standpoint um, uh, with an online application through what we call the digital sales platform, you can actually get a pre-approval as well as what we call an approval in principle as quickly as 15 minutes just to get a sense in terms of how much you qualify for if you switch over to us. But happy to unpack uh, you know, those mediums in terms of how you uh, can engage with us a little bit later. Thanks. Thank you so much for that. And as we wind up tonight's uh, conversation, Portia, do you have any last words to say to anyone who is looking to switch? Yes, please. Um, there's two things I wanted to say. Um, you know, the switching offer that I spoke about earlier, I think if you can take advantage of that offer, it's only up until the 31st of July. Um, the 50% discount and the additional 20,000 rand. And I think Level raised an important point um, where, you know, they were asking, can I use the equity from my home loan to pay off other, other loans, right? So if you have your unsecured lending products, they attract, you know, very high interest rates and perhaps you want to reduce the pressure, you could actually use that equity to pay off the home loan, the, you know, those, um, those amounts, because it will reduce the pressure and you will most likely not be put under pressure to pay it off in five years. Um, you, you know, you can extend it for as long as you want. Um, you know, typically from an upside perspective, we've got what you call the multi plan product. So it basically means that if you access this day that 400,000 rands that I spoke about, let's say 100,000 rands, you don't have to pay it off over 20 years. You can actually structure it to pay it off in five years' time. Um, so it is a great way of actually reducing, you know, um, the pressure from, a, from an interest rate perspective. Thanks. Thank you so much for having us this evening. Thank you so much, um, uh, guys, for joining us tonight. Thank you so much for the information. And we really, really appreciate you enlightening um, our family to know um, what they can do to ensure that they always maximize um, th these product offerings that different financial institutions have to make um, their, their property portfolios grow and to really just save those extra hundreds or, or three or four hundreds that you mentioned earlier. Thank you so much for joining us and have a good night. Thank you. Cheers. And we have reached the end of our conversation tonight. Thank you so much for watching. And we really, really appreciate you always sticking around when we are talking and having these conversations around how you can maximize your property portfolio. Until the next time I see you right here on the Private Property Podcast, 7 p.m. every weekday. Have a beautiful night.